When NASA decided to retire its iconic space shuttle in 2011, most people thought humanity lost the ability to return from space with a low-G runway landing. But that's not true in this century. A Louisville-based company, namely Sierra Space, was dedicated to bringing that ability back to life with its revolutionary fleet of Dream Chaser space planes. These spacecraft are advertised as having quite a few similarities and differences to NASA's space plane. And furthermore, it is coming closer to its first launch next year. In today's episode, we will dive into Dream Chaser and how it compares to the Space Shuttle, its progress toward its first launch, what to expect in the future, and more. On November 2, 2023, Sierra Space proudly revealed the first version of its Dream Chaser space plane, called Tenacity. It's considered the fruit of years of passionate determination, countless breakthrough innovations, and relentless commitment. Since its introduction to the world, Tenacity has stirred up the space community with its resemblance to NASA's iconic space shuttle. Indeed, Dream Chaser is inspired by the space shuttle's design but is more compact and efficient. It's based on NASA and Soviet designs, including the HL-20, a NASA spacecraft designed from the 1980s. NASA's original space shuttle had a wing design that was much like that of an airplane. Instead of being independent and perched atop a rocket, it was integrated with an external fuel tank that provided fuel for its main engines and had two solid rocket boosters attached at the sides. Each space shuttle was designed to fly at least 100 missions, but they actually flew fewer than that. One of the key distinctions of Dream Chaser is its adaptability. Space shuttles were launched vertically on a launch pad, utilizing solid rocket boosters, SRBs, and main engines. Thus, shuttles needed 7.8 million pounds of thrust to reach orbit. The SRBs collectively provided 6.6 .6 million pounds of thrust on top of the main shuttle engines, which added a total of 1.2 million pounds of thrust. The SRBs were jettisoned just two minutes into the flight, and the main engine cutoff would happen around eight minutes into the flight. Unlike the space shuttles, which require a dedicated launch system, Dream Chaser can be launched atop various rockets enhancing its flexibility, meaning it gives the company more options and safety nets if something were to go wrong. Its cargo version will be stowed within the rocket's payload fairings with its wings tucked in. Once the payload fairings separate, the vehicle will extend its wings and continue into orbit. For example, Tenacity's maiden launch will be conducted with the support of United Launch Alliance's Vulcan Centaur rocket. The rocket configuration contains the Vulcan first stage and the Centaur second stage with a standard length fairing. However, in the future when the company attempts crewed launches, Dream Chaser will launch without a payload fairing to allow an abort capability if something goes wrong. This would allow the spacecraft to launch on SpaceX's Falcon rocket without the fairing, an alternative in case other rockets cannot be ready in time. Normally, there is a technical challenge to integrate both vehicles. As you know, the fully stacked Dream Chaser is 13.6 meters high, larger a little bit than the fairing of Falcon 9 and even Falcon Heavy. The design of Dream Chaser draws inspiration from the space shuttles, but incorporates significant advancements. While the shuttles were large and complex, Dream Chaser is more compact and efficient. The space shuttle was about the size of a DC-9 aircraft and was 122 feet 37.237 meters in length. It also featured the 18.3 meter by 60 feet long by 4.6 meter by 15 feet wide payload bay. With such large payload bays, the shuttle could carry a variety of cargo, including military and defense satellites, scientific instruments, and even entire space station modules. These payloads weighed up to 27,500 kilograms, 60,600 pounds, in low-Earth orbit missions. Dream Chaser, on the other hand, is 30 feet, or 9 meters, long, which is roughly one-fourth the total length of the Space Shuttle orbiters. With the support of Sierra Space's Shooting Star Transfer Vehicle, Dream Chaser can deliver up to 5,500 kilograms of pressurized and unpressurized cargo to the space station, including food, water, supplies, and science experiments, and return to Earth with a gentle runway landing. The shuttle was 67 cubic meters, not including the airlock, and Tenacity's pressurized volume is 33 cubic meters, including both the space plane and the cargo module. 
This makes the space plane more sustainable and easier to maneuver, but it also assists with gentle 1.5G runway landings, ideal for fragile cargo. The small size could help to decrease the amount and complexity of the heat shield. The space shuttle has 24,000 tiles covering partly its body, 12 times that number of tenacity and it comes from its larger size. These tiles had compound curves, interfaced with thermal barriers and hatches, and had penetrations for instrumentation and structural access. This causes a significant structural design challenge for NASA in the creation of numerous unique tiles. In addition, the challenge of ensuring the strength integrity of the space shuttle's thermal protection system tiles was significant with a target probability of tile failure set at no greater than 1 108th, not to mention the amount of time necessary between missions to fix and replace specific individual tiles across the entire spacecraft. Dream Chaser features around 2,000 thermal tiles in total across the entire spacecraft, all of which will protect Dream Chaser from temperatures that could reach upwards of 3,000 Fahrenheit on re-entry, while keeping the vehicle itself at only 350 Fahrenheit. Sierra Space highlights that their thermal tiles are both strong and lighter weight than what was used during the shuttle program. The tiles on the Dream Chaser measure 10 times 10 inches, while for the shuttle the measurement is 6 times 6 inches. This allows for fewer overall tiles to be used and helps meet all micrometeorite orbital debris requirements. To ensure the TPS is intact for cargo to enter, disembark, and land safely on the runway, as well as possible crew missions, Sierra Space has added white cells in addition to black cells to its vehicle to improve its efficiency in removing more heat from the sun while in orbit, which in turn helps cool it. To avoid any potential risks related to TPS, Sierra Space is utilizing room temperature, vulcanizing RTV silicone for bonding tiles in its aerospace applications. RTV silicone is particularly suited for this purpose, due to its ability to withstand high temperatures, making it ideal for environments encountered during space missions. To ensure the integrity of the tile bonds, each tile undergoes rigorous testing. A mechanism that applies a pulling force is used to verify that the bond between the tile and the substrate is sufficiently strong. This testing is crucial to prevent any potential failures during flight, as even minor issues with tile adhesion can lead to significant safety risks. The combination of RTV silicone's thermal resilience and the mechanical testing of tile bonds reflects Sierra Space's commitment to maintaining high standards of safety and reliability in its engineering processes. Furthermore, recently, Sierra Space announced a groundbreaking new technology enabling exterior spacecraft tiles that can withstand the high temperatures of re-entering Earth's atmosphere over multiple frequent missions. This new thermal protection system, TPS, was created to meet the needs of a commercial space industry that is moving at a faster pace than previous generations of spaceflight and now requires more missions over shorter periods of time. Now that we know more about how Dream Chaser compares to the Space Shuttle and some of the improvements Sierra Space has made, let's take a look at how Tenacity gets closer to its first launch. We could have witnessed Dream Chaser as the payload for ULA's Vulcan Centaur in October if the space plane had been ready at that time. In fact, it wasn't. Sierra Space's Dream Chaser space plane was off the manifest for ULA's second Vulcan Centaur flight due to scheduling delays. Finally, the rocket launched in early October, and Tenacity's maiden launch is set to launch in early 2025, still atop the Vulcan Centaur rocket. The space plane arrived at Florida's Kennedy Space Center on May 20th. For its first mission, it will carry about 3,850 kilograms to the International Space Station. NASA has contracted with Sierra Space for seven cargo missions to the space station. In a news release on May 20th, NASA said the craft will expand the agency's commercial low Earth orbit resupply program. They described the punishing testing. The tiny 30 by 15 foot 9 by 4.5 meter craft has already undergone at the Neil Armstrong test facility. Before arriving at Kennedy, the space plane and its cargo module underwent vibration testing atop the world's highest capacity and most powerful spacecraft shaker system inside the agency's space environments complex, exposing the stack to vibrations like those it will experience during launch and re-entry to the Earth's atmosphere. Following vibration testing, the duo moved to NASA's in-space propulsion facility and was exposed to low ambient pressures, 
and temperatures ranging from negative 150 to 300 degrees Fahrenheit, negative 101 to 148 degrees Celsius. The Tenacity's readiness is a milestone for the next step of the company, given that Sierra is now working on a second version that can carry both crew and cargo. It will have a cargo capacity 40% larger than the first version and can support a crew of six. The plan for the Dream Chaser's next generation is supported by NASA through two phases of the commercial crew development program. The Sierra company was awarded $20 million in seed money in phase one in February 2010 and moving into phase two, they continued to receive another $80 million. Once Dream Chaser's first landing is successful, the company will enter the phase of recruiting its professional astronaut core for future crewed flights with an initial group of 12 to 15 people. Accordingly, those astronauts will be trained at a facility that the company is establishing in Florida. That building is also used to train researchers and other private astronauts planning to go to Orbital Reef, the commercial space station that Sierra Space is developing in partnership with Blue Origin and several other companies. Everything is still at the threshold of the development stage, but many people are excited about this future crewed version. Both NASA and the public expect it to be the perfect replacement for Boeing's Starliner, which is good for nothing. By inheriting and promoting the advantages of the space shuttle combined with the application of modern technology, Sierra's space plane promises to become NASA's powerful right hand in serving ambitious missions in the future, like SpaceX's Dragon did. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.